Hi friends, today I wanted to discuss about the uh, topic population interaction. This is a part of the uh, ecology chapter that is organisms and population. So population interaction is an interesting topic. So these are the details about myself. You can also subscribe for my channel youtube.com slash c slash biology tutor meet. So there you get uh, first PU and second PU videos of uh, classroom as well as you get interesting videos of field visits so kindly visit the channel for more such details now let us uh, proceed to this topic of population interaction so what is the definition of population interaction population interaction implies the interaction between animals plants and microbes along with nature so none of these organisms cannot live in isolation they cannot live in isolation but they have to interact in various ways to form a biological community the interactions of these population are of various types as shown in the table below so what are the types of interactions that you can come across in a population are it can be the interaction can be mutualism where both the species which are involved benefit from each other and there is a second part of it the interaction which we call it as computation where both species a and species b are affected by computation part of it both of them are affected and there is predation where you can notice that one of the species is benefited and the other species is armed so the species a is generally the predator and species b is the prey uh, so that is what is about predation which is also another type of population interaction Parasitism is also a type of population interaction where the species A, that is the parasite, is benefited and the species B, the host cell, is harmed. So in commensalism, species A is benefited and species B is neither benefited nor harmed. In amensalism, species A is affected but species B is neither benefited nor harmed. So the plus sign indicates benefit, minus sign indicates they are the organisms are harmed or affected zero is indicates they are neither benefited nor harmed so the interspecific interactions is interaction of population of two different species so they could be either beneficial detrimental or neutral so beneficial is indicated by the positive sign detrimental or harmful is indicated by negative sign neither harm nor benefit that is neutral is indicated by zero so that is how the table indicates now let us go for the first type of population interaction that is predation so predation if you look into it is nature's way of transferring energy from higher trophic levels to uh, by the energy that is fixed by the producers so for the energy to flow from the producers to the primary consumers and secondary consumers they have to eat each other that is predation is a way of transferring of energy fixed by plants to higher trophic levels example the tiger which is a predator eats a deer which is a prey sparrow is a predator which eats seed seed is a prey here yeah. so uh, even a herbivore many times we might consider it to be harmless animal but it's a plant predator herbivore is aptly defined as a plant predator Carnivore is defined as an animal predator. So there is herbivore and carnivores, they are predators in the context of the definition of predation. So you can also uh, look into the animal predator versus plant predator. This is a metamorphic, uh, uh, meta, uh, the indication of it wherein uh, plant predator feeds on the uh, plants and uh, it is just an indication of this it's a uh, herbivore animal and you can notice that even here a living thing is harmed but uh, in plants uh, they are much more vulnerable when compared to the prey of animal reason is they cannot run away from the uh, herbivore or plant predator that is one of the negative aspect of it so now the plant predators for plants herbivores are the predators nearly 25 percent of all the insects are known to be phytophagous that is feeding on the plant sap 
and other parts of the plants so they are also plant predators even though they are small in size we generally are under the belief that predator has to be large in size but that is not the case even a, a small insect which feeds on a plant is also a predator so plant preys they cannot run away from predators unlike animal preys and they are much more vulnerable and uh, are susceptible to the herbivores so the features of predation are so some of the important features of predation predation is required because it is a conduit it's a channel for energy transfer across the trophic levels the prey populations are kept under control so the exotic species are introduced into a geographical area they become invasive and start spreading fast because the invaded does a land where the exotic species are introduced they do not have natural predators example is in australia they have observed the prickly pear cactus which was introduced it caused havoc and uh, it brought it was brought under control by the introduction of its biological uh, predator that is a cactus feeding moth again you can notice that the moth is very small in size and uh, the prey that is the prickly pear cactus is larger in size so this is the plant that is a prickly pear cactus which was introduced into australia and uh, this plant had created havoc only after the introduction of the uh, prickly pear moth cactus moth they were brought under control so the biological control uh, that is the insect was utilized to bring this prickly pear cactus under control so this is the biological moths caterpillar that was introduced and again one more thing that you have to remember about is the pisaster pisaster is a variety of starfish in the rocky intertidal communities of the american pacific coast the starfish pisaster is an important predator when all the starfish were removed from an enclosed intertidal area more than 10 species of invertebrates became extinct within a year so only the removal of starfish it resulted in 10 species of invertebrates becoming extinct because of interspecific competition so this is the pisaster when it was removed from that nearly 10 species of invertebrates disappeared when the pisaster was present it was able to manage this ecological balance as a result of it uh, they kept the numbers of this invertebrates under check and as a result of it the 10 invertebrates were able to survive but once the pisaster was removed from the intertidal region so this 10 varieties of invertebrates disappeared so the ecological balance is maintained by predation so there has to be a balance of predator and prey number if predator is very efficient and it exploits its prey then the prey might become extinct and following it the predator will also become extinct in nature you notice that usually the prey numbers are more and predator numbers are less so for lack of food that is how the predator will become extinct if it is very efficient and it exploits its prey by destroying the all the prey uh, which are a source of food for it the defenses by prey to reduce predation are there are camouflage in insects and frogs and you can also notice the monarch butterfly i always call it as vishakani because it is highly distasteful to its predator that is usually the bird because of a special chemical present in its body and this interestingly this special chemical is acquired by the butterfly during its caterpillar stage by feeding on a poisonous weed so similar to vishakanya as per our mythological stories so the thorns acacia and cactus are the most common morphological means of uh, defense the thorns in acacia and cactus from the herbivores which are the plant predators so now some of the camouflage have uh, shown the photograph of it is in a jasmine flower you can notice this insect which looks exactly like a jasmine flower the camouflage is so much perfect that any predator can overlook it and think it to be a jasmine flower and here you can notice the stick insect where i am pointing it out they look exactly like an stick so it would be very difficult for a predator to identify the stick insect so this is a way of camouflaging to avoid from being victim for the predators another camouflage you can notice is this insect thorn insect they look like the thorns of a plant 
and even when they are moving the predators are betrayed into thinking that they are thorns of the plants so you can see even the larger variety of this thorn insect here and you can also notice here the insect wherein they look exactly like a leaf a dried up leaf and amidst the dried up leaves they are not visible unless you closely scrutinize and see them so you cannot differentiate between the insects so this is another wonderful camouflage that you can see it in the leaf insect so again this is a leaf insect butterfly that you can notice wherein they even the venation pattern and everything resembles that of the leaf so they are unnoticed amidst the leaves this is a way of camouflage that this insect has to overcome the predator nature offers many such camouflages if you look into this this is the uh, black moth which is found hiding in the uh, carbon suit on the uh, barks of the tree after the industrial revolution so you can also this is also given as an uh, evidence for natural selection that is industrial mel melanism in peppered moth is given as an example for or an evidence for natural selection happening at recent years so the camouflage is so perfect that this nocturnal insects when they are resting in the daytime they go unnoticed and uh, they survive from the predators this is a leaf insect which looks exactly like a leaf with the venation pattern and the color of it so another leaf insect that is there it's a camouflage that they have and here you can look at the it looks similar to a bark of wood this insect looks similar to the bark of wood so that is how they get this is a frog amphibian which is under camouflage and they are completely unnoticed on the tree unless they are closely scrutinized so this colors very body colors that you can notice in this they are going to uh, scare the predators because most of the time the more colorful and body they are they are poisonous again here it is completely camouflaged by the leaf in the leaf so this sort of cryptic colors in amphibians are a dissuading factor for the predators because it leads to indigestion or poisoning of it now we can notice the uh, hyla the tree frog they look exactly like the leaves of the plant and they get go unnoticed by the predators that is how they survive and it also helps them in hunting the insects uh, without any notice again you can see the frog green colored frog which is submerged under water and they are completely unnoticed in the vegetation this is a frog which is camouflaged on a bark of tree and this is the monarch butterfly which i always call it as the vishkanya because of its uh, uh, in a caterpillar stage they accumulate the uh, poison by eating on the poisonous things and uh, later the predator if it consumes it poisons them so generally the predators avoid this monarch butterflies so these are all the monarch butterflies on the trees so now the defenses by the prey to reduce predation are many plants produce and store chemicals that make the herbivores sick when they are eaten and it inhibits feeding or digestion disrupt disrupt its reproduction or even kill it the weed callotropis which we call in kannada as yakkadgeda it grows in abundant fields uh, the plant produces highly poisonous cardiac glycosides which is the reason that cattle or goats do not browse on this plant a wide variety of chemical substances that we extract from plants on a commercial scale like nicotine in tobacco plant caffeine in coffee quinine from cinchona tree which is used for treatment of malaria strike nine opm they are all produced by them actually as defense against grazers and browsers but today man is commercially exploiting these substances as uh, for beverages as well as stimulants as well, and as medicines so this is the yakkadgeda or callotropis plant which secrete the cardiac glycosides thank you